Go on, Andre. So one more to let in. That's brilliant. So here we are once again, Thursday evening, 7.30, and I'm going to try not to wobble around a little bit too much. Uh, I know I'm a bit prone to moving. It's hard to be stable and hard to be sat in the same place, even when you've got a chair that's anchored to the ground. I tend, tend to be a bit of a, a kind of a, a wobbler around her a little bit. So, um, but anyway, here we go. So what have we got on the show tonight? Well, we've got three videos going to be on tonight, which is brilliant. Two of them are about cycles and kind of fit our category of look for the learning, which is really exciting. Um, our fantastic books, best books today. We've got this one with us. This is called Everyday Nature, and it's by Andy Beer. Talk a little bit more about that one later because it's it's been a book that's been part of my life now for well over a year. Um, tend to tend to dip in and out of it on an everyday basis. So that's really cool. And we've got some footage at the end, part one of, of the footage from the Oxney walk we did in the summer. It would have possibly been a little bit longer, but I kind of ran out of time on the editing suite. So it's the length that it is effectively. But uh, there you go. Now, I don't know whether John will be joining us tonight, but the breaking news and I've gone public with it today, which is really, really exciting for me anyway. And hopefully then for the rest of the world is been asked to join the board of directors for a CIC for educational life, which is absolutely brilliant. And I am the well-being and events director. So we're going to be running some of our five senses events through the CIC, but it's a fantastic opportunity to actually get some grant funding and we can go and work with organizations and groups, people who maybe have a little bit of a need to get outside and are suffering from anxiety, maybe mild forms of depression, just people who are overly stressed. And as anybody who's kind of saw the, what has been watching my social media for the last little while, um, it got kind of became quite apparent through conversations with a fella who came out in the walks, funnily enough, that one of the things I've been dealing with is anxiety and I've been using the countryside to deal with it now for probably well over 40 years. I'm not going to get any more specific than that. Um, but it was one of those moments where you don't know what you don't know until you know about it. So if you want to find out a little bit more as far as I'm concerned on that, then trawl back through my social media. But last Saturday, there was light bulb moment part one. And when I wrote that blog, it was so big that I had to, to turn it into three posts because yeah, it was just too long. So part one was last Saturday and this Saturday will be the light comes on part two. So that will be yeah, hopefully quite an interesting read. So check that one out either on Facebook or on LinkedIn. Anyway, once again, Simon's waffling, as he has a tendency to do. So, oh, thank you very much, Judith. That's brilliant. I've just turned the chat on. Kind of helps if people are trying to talk to me, if I can actually read it. So there you go. Anyway, I've got two videos I want to show. I'm going to play them both, and then I'll have a little bit of a chat about them afterwards. But they're both about cycles. One, I actually only discovered it when I was talking through my videos and bits and pieces yesterday was... Uh, was, was early in the morning, so it's a little bit dark, and the other one shot at the weekend, but they're both about cycles. So anyway, let's go and find these videos. That's on, that's on, click the share button. So here's number one. There we go. Sunday the 28th of November and it's one of my favorite days of the year 
Not because it's under the 28th of November, but if you look up, you can see the beech tree has almost completely shed its leaves. And that's magical for me because that means we can take the net off the pond, which we've now done. It's bagged up. Now, we have to put a net over our ponds in the autumn because of all the leaves falling. And when the leaves fall into the water, they make the water, as they decay, nutrient rich. That encourages blanket weed and lemma, duckweed. And we've got both in our pond. And if you like, that nutrient rich water, when we get sunny days in the summer, really, really does increase the amount of blanket weed and lemma that we get. So we try and break that cycle by stopping as many of the leaves as possible actually getting in the water. So, as you can imagine, we've got the net across the pond and there is lemma building up, which we can't get at. This year, just to even compound that further, the pump got clogged and I couldn't get at that to stop that either. And that sound of water and that moving of water is a vital component for me in the garden. You know, it's, it's all kind of part of the cycles. You know, and one of those cycles is putting the net out. One of those cycles is bringing the net back in. It's breaking the cycle of light and nutrients which cause those weeds so we can get those out. It's having that sound of nature which is calming and soothing to our souls. It's all really, really important. And when those things start to be missed, I kind of come out less. So I now know that even though it's much, much colder now, we've got the sound of water back, the pump's clear, we're easing the lemma. And incidentally, the lemma and the duckweed actually help to keep the sunlight into the water down because obviously they blanket the top of the surface and that stops the sunlight getting in. So even with the lemma and the blanket weed, it's a balance between having too much, which kind of strangles everything, but keeping the water clear, which it is when the balance is right. It's funny. Do you know, I've just realized I've used the word cycles and balance several times during this little video. And that's really cool because isn't that ultimately what we're trying to achieve here? A really good balance so we can utilize fully those natural cycles. And that's number one and here is number two Never let you go. good morning 
it's about quarter past six and it's a Thursday it's pretty early but you know what it's amazing it is amazing because all of a sudden we have calm and we have still there are birds calling alarm calling we've been hearing robins and owls you might notice the owls but one of the things that I keep saying and it's so important look for the learning in everything and there's a pretty important one today you see we've had a lot of wind it's been really windy lately we had a couple of days of seriously heavy rain and now it's calm and that's important because it helps us to realize that whatever is coming at us will not last wherever we are right now will not last it will blow through and things always always get better sometimes you just got to stick with it but that's the learning wherever you are is not the end it's not the final place it will pass and like the tree in the breeze when it does stop you can stand back up again by being flexible <laughs> So there we go. That's two little videos about cycles. Now, you'll have heard me talk, they use that phrase, look for the learning. I do it a lot, I say it a lot, but it's so, so important because if we just look at the world that is around us, there is so much that we can learn. You know, there's the four basic shamanic principles that I talk about quite a lot as well. One of which is look for the learning, it's the third one. The first one being, recognize oh, so the first one being live now yeah be aware of now we tend to get very very caught up in what happened yesterday and what's going to happen tomorrow so it's living for now the second one is recognizing those thoughts that are good and those thoughts that are not and jettisoning those that are not good keeping those that are good focus on those things that are good because if we do that those are the things that will bring to us the third one is look for the learning and again, in that case, cycles are really, really important. We talked a lot of, last week about lunar cycles and the moon and the, the way we travel around the sun and how they all kind of fit together. And as I said there, it always helps to remember that it doesn't matter where you are right now, it's going to change. You know, even if things are really, really bad, like that storm blowing through, the storm will end. And we pick ourselves up by being flexible, by going with the flow to a certain extent. And then like the tree does, to stand up, like in Batman, where Bruce Wayne, you know, as his dad says, why do we fall, fall down, Bruce? So we can learn to pick ourselves back up again. But it's also really good to remember that when things are really, really, really good, as they often are, even that doesn't, doesn't stay the same. Even that will change. So it just helps to remind us that things are always coming and going and moving around so that's really important and remembering that flexibility thing you know if you ever when you're out in the, out in the wild look at the trees that have fallen over the size of the root ball compared to the size of the tree is tiny you know i don't think i've ever seen uh, the circumference of a root ball that's more than about three to four meters and you think some of those trees are could even be several hundred meters high. Most of them are 40 or 50, but even so, the ability to stand up, even in the hurricane of 87, I think most of us probably remember that, was you know, the ability to stand up through that was absolutely amazing and stunning, but they did. Most trees actually stayed up. So that's again, really, really cool and something that we can learn and something that we can take on board. I think that's really cool. And, as I said, with the pond, I mean, without kind of like rehashing me everything, but it is great when you can take the net off. You know, it's funny. We talk all about cycles and how things keep going over. And then we produce a video about breaking the cycle. Because if you like, I remember back in the days when I was at school, I was at Christchurch, and they always said, if you want children to remember a rule, teach them the exceptions. 
because they'll remember the exceptions way better than they'll ever remember the rule. And that's kind of quite cool. But I have to admit, you know, when the leaves start falling, got to get the net out. And as I said, this year was just a pain. But when you actually get to take the net back off and you can sort everything out, that's brilliant. And it is, it's a balance because that blanket weed and the lemma, they just put a film right the way across the water so the sun can't get in, which keeps it tidy. But so it's a battle. We don't really want lemma. We don't really want blanket weed. But once you've got it, you're not going to get rid of it. So it's a case of saying, okay, fine, we use it. And you know, nature gives us gifts. You know, I've said about looking for the learning, but maybe, just maybe we have to say that the lemma and the blanket weed is a gift. They help us keep the water clear. They help to keep the water with a natural balance. So we accept that gift and we just have to keep an eye on it and we have to contain some of it, but that's okay. You know, it's part of that kind of natural harvest and it's about nature giving us things back because one of the things I've very definitely come to know and I've come to learn is that if you like everything that we need is there the land actually does love us you know if you actually think about it it's not such a bizarre thought because we've always had that relationship with the land it's where our connection is or was and it should still be if you think it's the land that feeds us it's the land that gives us spectacular things to look at, that gives us our air to breathe, you know? So all of these things, we need to take them on board as gifts and accept them as such. And if we've got to do a little bit to actually kind of keep that balance, well, do you know what? We have a responsibility to look after our world because it looks after us, you know? And it's one of those we should be providing as much habitat as we possibly can for bees, for example, because they pollinate all our food. So it's that kind of reciprocal relationship. And we really need to kind of focus on that and keep an eye on it because we're we'll keeping an eye on ourselves. Because it's like, you know, if we shut every single supermarket that was out there, we wouldn't have any food to eat because none of us would be able to grow and grow it anymore. So we just need to remember that, I think, from time to time. It's good. And yeah, you'll have heard me say over and over, what's the first thing when we do when we go outside, we generally take a deep breath of fresh air. That's because our bodies remember that connection. No brainer, he says boldly. So if there's anything there that anybody would like to add, any questions, I'm going to move on to the next section and talk about this book. This book is Everyday Nature. Now, it's always funny because I'm looking at the screen and I'm seeing a mirror image. But of course, you're seeing the flip side. So the words are around the right way, whereas they're not for me. So Everyday Nature, it's by Andy Beer. It's a uh, National Trust book. My sister gave me this last year. She, in fact, she's been pretty good over the years at get, buying books that I've really enjoyed. And this is one of those. And I kind of like it. I got it from my same birthday last year. And it was shortly after I'd started reading a book called Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life, which we'll look at in another episode, which is actually a very, very awesome book. Um, and that has, art, uh, art, uh, speak English, Simon, that has chapters for, there are 80 of them. And I generally read one for a week just to go over it, because it's amazing. If you just read something once and move on, you forget most of it. But if you read something for three or four days and you repeat it, you tend to remember it a bit more and different things kind of burn out for, for you. So I'll be reading that in partnership with this one. And this one has loads and loads of nuggets about nature. Um, there's an entry in there for every single day. And it's been an amazing little uh, tomb of information that I've been using on and off throughout this show or bits and pieces to pick up. I mean, one of the ones that I still remember is the fact that the burdock was the inspiration for Velcro. So maybe we'll pick that one out on another occasion. But what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to read you the entry for today. Okay, the entry for the 2nd of December is the Starling Murmuration. So, I'm sitting, shivering, overlooking the river sunset and hoping for something miraculous. In winter, starlings gather together in giant flocks. As darkness falls, they come together to create a shifting, folding shape in the sky. This is a murmuration, and you may see one anywhere, 
Starlings like to roost near a pier in town or, or over a reed bed. At a distance, the murmuration looks like smoke twisting in the breeze. It whirls, pulses and falls as if the birds are a single sheet of black silk being waved and folded by an invisible hand. It would be easy to believe that magic is at work, and yet just like a sunflower and a pine cone, the laws of nature, simple rules and complex patterns are at work again. It turns out that each starling simply watches the seven or so birds around it and tries to follow each change of direction. That is all that is needed to create a mirage sufficient to fool a marauding peregrine or sparrowhawk. So there you go. Uh, would somebody like to pick another day, any day, a favourite day of the year? And we'll see what they've got in there for that day. So don't all jump at once, but let's, let's have a couple of uh, selected dates and we'll see what the book's got to offer. Ah, 14th of August. There we go. Right. 14th of August, that's May, that's August. So the 14th of August, here we come. Ah, moon jellyfish. Walk along the shore and the chances are that you will find a flying saucer, a jellyfish. You may find lots, a whole smack of them. She's not in the book, but I do love collective nouns because they're really weird, some of them. A smack of jellyfish. So next time you get that one in a quiz, you'll know it. Smack of jellyfish. Jellyfish have a whole host of reasons to go on a visit to see the Wizard of Oz. They have no bones, brain or heart. And yet they are one of the most successful creatures in the oceans. Can you imagine that? No heart. The creature in front of you is most likely to be a moon jellyfish, with four circles arranged cross-like across its centre. This variety doesn't sting people, but it is a very effective predator of plankton. They may look like flying saucers and be named after the moon, but just not. Jellyfish are one of the creatures that have travelled into space. American scientists sent this very species of jellyfish on a space shuttle trip to study how zero gravity affects their ability to tell up from down. Needless to say, they came back with some serious vertigo. So there you go. That's the 14th of August and jellyfish. And we've got here a request for the 3rd of June. I can't imagine why that date got selected. Can actually. But anyway, here we go, 3rd of June. Cleavers. Now we've talked about cleavers on this show in the past. It's been a really good year for cleavers. Remember that annoying kid from school? There was a plant that they could not resist sticking on your back when you weren't looking. It has lots of nicknames, goosegrass, sticky bobs, kisses, and we used to call it sticky weed. It's a square stemmed plant covered in tiny hooks and little bobble seeds. It scrambles up the hedgerows and through flower beds so vigorously in June that it seems as if it is going to cover everything. This is one of the bed straw plants, one used as stuffing for mattresses. I think it would work much better than the finer yellow ladies bed straw that is also in flower around now. It's a herbal remedy too. The leaves and stems can be cooked to make a tonic that cleans out toxins and the pulp can relieve, but relieve bites, burns and stings. Grab a handful from the hedge and take a closer look. Now admit it, it's really tempted to sticking it on. Let's blow the punchline. Now admit it, it's really tempting to stick it onto someone. There you go. So. It's a great book. It's an absolutely brilliant book. And I've been reading a little section of it every day for a year and a bit, but it's going to possibly find a space sitting on the shelf a little bit more permanently as I've got another book I'm going to pick up when we get into the new year. And maybe I'll tell you that about that one later on too. Uh, my golly, look, June is a great birthday month. Does that mean we're full of Gemini's in here today? Wow. So anyway, you will have heard about these walks we do from time to time called the five senses experiences. 
I absolutely love them. They are amazing. And what's even more amazing is that we've taken some people out on them who've been really down to Thomas's and really trying to like, sometimes they've come out because they've been curious. Sometimes they've come out because they've been nanked. <clears throat> but pretty much we take people out and we give them a real experience. It's totally different to any other walk, I believe, that anybody pretty much has ever done. But they're really cool days. We go out and we use our senses to really connect to the world. We talk about connection. We talk about how we're a part of the world. And when we went to Oxley Bottom in the summer, we took some footage myself. Ross was with us and he shot, 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 yeah. he shot some footage as well and just started editing it together now there's no footage in this section of Oxley Bottom you'll have to wait for that one but um <clears throat> it's some sections I'll tell you I've got a drink today and I've still got spaghetti tongue so I'm going to play the video we'll have a quick chat about part of it afterwards if you like but basically just enjoy this because it was a fantastic day and yeah, so here we go. So good morning. Today's show day. Really excited. The five senses at Oxney Church. We are so chuffed, so pleased to have got access to Oxney Church. It's on private ground and you can't get in. And according to George from the History Project who's coming with us, he doesn't think we're ever gonna get in again. So that makes the day even more special. The sun is out. You know, it was, sun, it was sunny on Thursday, St. Swithin's Day, and, and tradition has it that if it's sunny on St. Swithin's Day, then the rest of the summer, maybe the autumn, are gonna be really good, which is great because this year's been a bit poor. So I'm having breakfast and I'm fired up and I'm ready to go and I can't wait to get out there and help help today's guests with a little bit of history, natural history, a little bit of connectivity and uh, hopefully a little bit of peace. So I'll see you on the walk. Bye. <laughs> sense with any kind of outdoor experience where you're thinking about or looking to deal with any kind of connectivity and engaging with the world we're in just take a minute and really think about how fortunate we actually are to be here on this planet because as far as we know this is the only planet anywhere that's quite now the odds are oh, that there's got to be somewhere else but it's, it's, it's a long way away because much as we like to say, yes, we want to have a good sunny day, and we don't like the cold, our window of operation is actually pretty narrow. And we become gibbering and stupid, just too much heat, the same as with too much cold. Now, Earth is the distance it is away from the sun, and that's absolutely, we would only be a fraction closer, or a fraction further away, and none of this would have happened. You know, it's too cold on Venus, it's too hot on Venus, and it's too cold on Mars. So we're really lucky to be right here, this position with the sun right now just about there. Planet, live. And that has been the topic of discussion for thousands and thousands of years and we still haven't properly worked out what the answer to that is or even if it's a question comes to that. But that spark is here and it's in us and it's a part of us all the time. But that gives you a question, because we can't put our hands on it and we can't measure it, where exactly is it? That's another question that people have been discussing forever. 
But the conundrum comes because you would say, oh, that spark's within us. You know, it's, 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 it's a part of us. But it isn't necessarily. It's always worth stopping and having a look because those orange and black caterpillars are quite prominent. So there we go. That was part one. Now, as you as you can tell, I had a bit of a problem with wind on that day. So I edited out a lot of the dialogue because you can't hear it over the wind, and I kind of lost it. And you've probably already added more than enough of the sound of my voice. But there was a whole host more. But next week we'll get on to. Uh, there'll be a little bit about connectivity there'll be lunch a little bit of the history of the area and uh, we'll have part two and it's funny I was just thinking the other day for those of us that have been here for the last three weeks and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of those clips from Lock Glass and edit them into one program and I'll get that out to YouTube so we've actually got the whole thing in, in one go and then I'll probably do the same thing with the Oxney videos afterwards. Indeed. Yeah, it was a brilliant day, Judith. It was one of those. Yeah, you know, it's one of those. All days are absolutely brilliant, but some of them are more brilliant than others in real proper good animal farm speak, so to say. It was just a fantastic day. It really was. Since you remember, it was rather warm. One of the few that we actually had. Anyway, so that's where we are at the moment. Um, we're building up towards Christmas. The new year is looking amazingly exciting. Um, just in case anybody's missed it, we're gonna have a, the Simple Life Circle website is gonna transform, mutate into simonpollard.uk as of January. We have already got 16 walk dates in for next year. We haven't yet got any of the dates in with English Heritage. We're just waiting for them to sort out some of their processes so that <clears throat> everything is done in such a way that they're happy with it because being English Heritage, we can't just do it. It's got to be done in such and such a way. But uh, Charlotte, is, is, who's the welfare lady at, at uh, Walmart, is on it. She's working hard. She's lovely, actually. But she's actually responsible for English Heritage right away across the UK. So do you ever know, we get it right, we could be doing the five senses everywhere. Wouldn't that be really cool? So we've got that coming. And obviously with educational life, we're going to, uh, is, is, is starting to happen. We're picking up the ball and rolling with that. And um, we've got another meeting on Monday and there's some very exciting things going on in there. So that's really, really exciting as well. So it's a case of keep watching this space because there's going to be more and it's going to get bigger and it's going to get better. Um, as you can imagine, it, 
doesn't matter how bigger or better it's going to get because if it's got me in there at the helm it's still going to have an element of chaos to it so um that kind of earthiness will be quite fun but anyway keep an eye out for all of those things i'm obviously going to keep you up to date because i'm here to do that so here we are for the first program in december we are coming to a bit of a close uh, thank you very much for coming in especially d it's always nice to have a new face in the room i hope you've enjoyed the the time here and hopefully we'll see you next week as well um but i think that's pretty much about it so uh Thank you very, very much, everybody. And um, yes, the, the video will go up next week on probably Wednesday or Thursday. And I'll work out sometime between now and then as to what we're going to do next week. OK, brilliant. Right. Thank you very much, everybody. Stopping recording. You can breathe.